In our previous film, we had a look at elements of line and linear composition. Now we want to flesh this out with having a look at tone and how tone can both describe form, but can also bring in elements of drama or elements of extreme subtlety. There's stuff to be learnt here from everybody, whether you're a total beginner or whether you're a hardened old professional, you know, just to deconstruct some of these paintings and try and see how the artist built it up, breaking it down to its component parts and looking at some of the techniques. So let's start with something which is perhaps the pinnacle of the whole thing, the blue rigi, which you probably know, but you probably haven't ever thought to break down technically. We've got something here which is from all sorts of points of view, the pinnacle of what one could hope to achieve in watercolour. I mean, technically, it's like a magician putting colour down. There are veils of colour laid across here, which I've been painting all my life, and I can't see how these achieve. I mean, this is a painting that's absolutely full of light. It's bursting with light. But when we actually have a look at the tones of those first washes laid down against this white, you squint at that, they're really mid-tone washes. It's only when the drawing, the line work accrues later on, which tend to be the darkest bits of the piece, that all this tone and all this colour working as tone falls into its hierarchy of what's light and what's dark. Right. What we're doing here is having a look at the simple simplicity of totally what's going on here. I've chosen, again as Turner often did, to work on a really quite dark to mid-tone paper. And the point of that is that rather than the normal watercolour approach where you actually block areas of dark tone in leaving the lights, just for this first initial look I want to be able to make a positive statement about the light that's happening there. So initially just laying in, in simple terms, where the strength of that light is, and it's really strong behind that tower block that's building up there. And then it's picking up again and reflecting in the water. This is not trying to describe in any sense at all any of the actuality of what things are doing, but just to really get in my mind the fact that there are broad areas of tone going on, light, medium, dark. No mention of colour at all, we're not interested in the lovely warmth that's starting to develop in that sky. I can't wait to get to grips with that later on with a little bit of Turner-esque yellow. It's just making myself feel confident that I know tonally, dramatically, what's going on there. I find these absolutely extraordinary because we're able to see these in the context of what we know to be more finished pieces. You can see into Turner's mind what he was thinking when he first approached the subject. You know, it's a bit of dashed on colour, probably taken not more than 30 seconds to put on. Many of these were unfinished. Many of these didn't fulfil any other function in Turner's mind other than him sitting down saying to himself, is there a possibility that this could contain something hidden in there that I would want to go on with? So if you do 10 you might get one which reached fruition. If you only do one and it falters, you're lumbered. Another interesting thing here, you can see where Turner's tap this with his fingers. Anything which makes the mark will do. A finger is just as valid at all as a bit of dead animal tied on a stick that we call a brush. If it makes the mark, if it does the job. But look at this, the Shields Lighthouse, which you can just see down the bottom right here. A lot of the fascination with uh, lighthouses, Turner, he always liked that sort of difference between the man-made light and the God-given light. So there are all sorts of little sub subplots going on here. But this is a tonal piece. He's chosen to keep well away from colour. This is about looking at the drama that tone can give you. The authority that a light shape working with and basically quite a strong dark slab will give you. So we've got large light, mid-tone to light area within which very dark things are happening. We've got a very dark area over here where the trees are within which very light things are happening. It's a lovely counterpoint for me compositionally. 
And when the sun comes round, if it comes round and provides us with a wonderful sunset, it'll be a chance to really let rip with some strong reds as strong mid-tones here. Can't wait for that to happen. I've got to stop and reserve some of this excitement for when I move into colour. <laughs>